Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. And welcome to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and our first segment today deals with aliens. Aliens in social media, yep. And um, in this particular case, aliens from my childhood who are making an appearance and who are trending on social media. Yes, aliens from my childhood are now trending on social media. Not a sentence that I ever really expected to say, but what sentence do you ever really expect to say? I mean, it's not like as a kid you're just sitting there making up sentences that you hope someday you will say. Maybe you did. Hey, I'm not going to judge. Okay, so aliens, social media, what's the connection? Well, in this case, it is, uh, we, we talked about, I think on this podcast, but uh, certainly on other podcasts, the popularity of Baby Yoda and how Yoda has Baby Yoda, who is 50, 50 year old Baby Yoda. I guess, you know, Yoda says in Empire Strikes Back when 800, I think 800 years old, you reach look as good, you will not. So if you live to be 800, maybe 50 still is uh, considered a baby, but Baby Yoda is so amazingly cute. First, uh, Baby Yoda was trending because of his appearance on an episode of The Mandalorian, which is on, which is Disney Plus's, yeah, Disney Plus's, Disney's new streaming service, Disney Plus, um, and it is their live action series called The Mandalorian. So when Baby Yoda made his appearance, then he was trending because everybody thought he was so stinking cute, which he is. And now the memes have come. So Yoda, Baby Yoda has these great big eyes that just look up at you like lost little puppy or cute little puppy or whatever. And, um, so I keep seeing memes with Yoda making the, the, the looking up with the, with the big innocent eyes. And then it says the face my XYZ makes when he or she wants or, you know, sees me doing or those sorts of things. I've seen a million of those memes. There's also a meme of, uh, Yoda, baby Yoda holding a cup of some sort and lots of memes about coffee or hot chocolate or just anything that can uh, involve a cup. I was speaking about this with our entertainment host, Cynthia, earlier, and she said there's even um, a meme where Baby Yoda is holding not only the cup, but um, uh, she's Mexican and he's holding a specific uh, Hispanic cookie, I think she said, but dessert of some sort. And so they've made a meme out of that. And so, yeah, and then she said, um, the internet is amazing. And I said, yeah, the internet is amazing. And also people have too much time on their hands. I ha- I go back and forth on this. I think people have too much time on their hands, but I'm also perfectly willing to uh, partake of and laugh at and, you know, enjoy the memes that they use that too much time on their hands to create. I guess I... You know, there are things that I have done that maybe some people would say I have too much time on my hands. Making memes is not one of them. Doesn't mean I'll never do it, but just not something that I have taken up as a hobby. But there is a meme out there for pretty much anything. And actually, another friend of mine posted on social media, on Facebook a few weeks ago, that um, there's a meme for everything. And 
whenever she thinks she is alone in some strange habit, she finds a meme that tells her that there are other people in the world who have that same strange habit. So uh, the it made her memes make her feel less alone in her goofy or strange or silly habits. See, social media bringing us together through memes. The other trending viral alien from my childhood is E.T. I don't know if you have seen the new Comcast commercial featuring E.T. It's actually, um, I'm sure there's a shorter version that they would, that they'd air as a commercial, but it's actually about four minutes long and it is a reunion between E.T. and Elliot. Um, so yeah, uh, the actor who played Elliot as a small child came back as a not so small child. He's got to be in his forties now, I would suppose. And so the commercial, uh, like I said, it's about four minutes long. So it's, you know, a, a kind of a, a mini story. There's lots of Easter eggs in there. There's lots of references to the original movie. And let me just get this out of the way. I didn't like E.T. as a kid. And I haven't seen it as an adult. I should probably go back and watch it. But it scared the snot out of me as a kid. I didn't, I just, I didn't, it wasn't E.T. himself that scared me. It was more of when the world finds out about E.T. and they quarantine the house and there's the guys in the hazmat suit and... Um, I was telling, I was talking about this earlier on the entertainment pod, podcast. For some reason, Elliot and his little tidy whitey underwear and his scrawny little chest freaked me out. <laughs> I don't know why. You'd think the alien would freak me out, but no, uh, the movie scared me as a kid and I have not gone back to watch it as an adult. I've seen, of course, you know, bits and pieces and there's all of those iconic moments and they make reference to a lot of those in this commercial mini movie it's somewhere between a mini movie and a commercial i don't know what you would call that it starts out with um the with children playing in the backyard and notice they, they've built a snowman and they notice that the arms are moving strangely like one arm appears and then disappears and then another arm appears so they they creep forward and then et pops out from behind their snowman and there is the scream the drew barrymore scream from the original movie i mean obviously it's not drew barrymore but they're they're clearly recreating that scene both kids scream and you know the the lights the lights are flickering on the house you know all those good et um et references so then grown up elliot comes out to see what is going on and discovers his childhood friend who has come back for a visit i mean this is a mini movie it's not a movie itself so we don't find out why et has come to visit how he's come back etc cetera, etc cetera, all those things you might find out if it was a longer actual sequel at any rate, E.T. has come back for some kind of a visit and then he gets to hang out with adult Elliot and his wife and their two children. They play in the snow and all sorts of other things. But you have to remember that this is a, a Comcast commercial. So they do a lot of things that promote Xfinity products, etc. And, you know, I've seen articles already grumping about why et shouldn't be what did it say something like flogging products i i don't know it was clever i mean it got people to watch right so um anyway it's been trending and people keep posting it on various social media platforms that i am on what i am sort of amazed by am i amazed by it I don't know. Uh, a couple of friends have posted it with like crying emojis and, you know, d you know, watch with tissues. This will make you cry. Maybe it's because I didn't like the movie as a kid. It didn't make me cry. I, I thought it was fun and I liked all the Easter eggs in there and all the references to the movie. There is, uh, the, the, the probably the most iconic reference that they make is that the, the kids do take E.T. on their bikes and the bikes fly and they go in front of the moon. Uh, so that's cool. There's the glowing finger. Um, there's, you know, E.T.'s little, little strange voice that he speaks in and, you know, they take E.T. so that he can, he doesn't have to phone home this time. Uh, I don't know. He apparently has better communication skills now, but there is that, there is a mention where one of them says either Elliot or E.T. how how things have changed since E.T. was here the first time to visit. Obviously, a lot of um, a lot of 
technological advancements since E.T. was here the first time. I, I would assume that E.T.'s people are still more advanced than we are, but he's kind enough not to make reference to it. So, aliens trending on social media. There you go. Who knew? We're going to go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about some Christmas trends. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, and I'll be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Before the break, we were talking about aliens, specifically E.T. and Baby Yoda, aliens from my childhood who are now trending uh, for completely new reasons. Uh, obviously, they didn't trend in my childhood because, well, they could have trended in different ways, but they did not trend on social media because it didn't exist. At any rate, we are moving on. It is December 2nd. We are just, you know, now, now it's okay if you want to decorate for Christmas and, and, and talk about Christmas and do all those things. We've passed Thanksgiving. So I'm cool with that. And apparently CBS did their annual airing of, um, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer tonight. So it is trending on Twitter. Lots of adults talking about how they don't care if they're adults. They're going to watch Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. They don't care if they don't have children in their house. They're still going to watch it because they watch it every year. Also, lots of comments about how, uh, just, you know, things that you notice when you're an adult that you might not have noticed as a kid. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about how much bullying there is in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It was created at a different time, much like the early Peanuts shows. I mean, like a Peanuts Christmas, Charlie Brown Christmas it has a lot of bullying in it as well. They are so mean to Charlie Brown in so many of those those shows, not only Christmas, but Halloween and, um, Thanksgiving that, you know, there's just, there's, you're stupid. You're, you, you know, they're mean to him. They're rude. Just a lot of bullying. And Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer is no exception. There is a lot of bullying. Little baby Rudolph is born with a red nose and Santa is a jerk in Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. So there is a lot of talk about that. Um, one of the, um, there, you know, then there's a lot of people who are happy it's still on. You know, they grew up with it as a child. They, they, they you know, there's a lot of like, I don't care if it's bullying. Or she, you know, you don't need to go to extremes. But uh, lots of lots of people making fun of um, the reindeer who bully bully Rudolph in the beginning because they, you know. <laughs> You know when in the, uh, in old animation, or this happens to be claymation, but the way they did their eyes, like to show shock or surprise, and their eyes would like just go all googly in different directions. Well, that is uh, that is what people are commenting on, and the fact that one of the reindeer has hair, and they just don't they they feel like those reindeer should be bullied as well. Um, trivia fact, Yukon Cornelius was the first hipster is one of the tweets that I saw. Another one was, um, a lot of references to Santa as, um, either an a-hole or, um, um, uh, well, D-I-C-K. You know, we try to keep things clean here. Uh, so I'll, I'll channel my mother and spell the words that I'm not going to say, but, um, the 
uh, man, there's so much in this. There's so many strange things. Like the Island of Misfit Toys, that is a weird part. I never really liked that as a childhood because it kind of freaked me out. Several of the tweets that I found the most comical involved um, Yukon Cornelius. As I said, you know, he was the... Uh, he was the first hipster. Then there's this one. Yukon Cornelius from Rudolph had me tripped up as a kid when he licked the silver in the mine. I thought he said silver tastes like peppermint. So my dumb <clears throat> A licked a dime thinking it would taste like peppermint, but it was not even close. <laughs> I love the things that we miss here or misunderstand as kids. Lots of comments on the, um, you know, how everyone's rude to Rudolph until his red nose comes in handy and then they're all sweetness and light to him. Lots of memes, bumble memes, which are cute. Um, one, one Yukon Cornelius tweet that I now can't find again, um, is how much the, okay, actually here it is, uh, at Polar Ginger says, Yukon Cornelius is a nice guy. Until he starts whipping his dogs and sadistically torturing the abominable snowman by trying to drown him, pulling out all his teeth, throwing him over a ledge, and dragging him in chains back to Santa's sweatshop. Yeah, don't, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, but uh, Yukon Cornelius is very mean to uh, Bumbles, the abominable snowman. But even if Bumbles bounce, I don't know. It's uh, it's a classic. I do watch it every year. It's not my favorite of the claymation, the the those that 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 style. I I like some of the other ones, like Santa Claus is coming to town, or um, oh, Heat Miser and Snow Miser, the uh, year without a Santa Claus. That one is definitely my favorite. But it's an interesting look at a time when it was more acceptable to just. You know, some people might say it, it was better because you didn't have to, you know, be politically correct or you didn't have to watch your words. But there's nothing wrong with being kinder to people, especially people who are different. So I'm not going to hop up on uh, on a soapbox and go off on that. But so many different comments, different reactions to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Uh, our second Christmas story is... Um, well, the the fact that rainbow Christmas trees are the hottest new holiday trend, or one of the hottest new holiday trends, I guess, and they are, whoo, they are bright. They are Christmas. They are um, swirly, rainbow-colored Christmas trees, and I don't want one, but they are bright, and uh, I don't know. So, um, untraditional Christmas tree. It's a trend this year. It's about lots of color. Obviously, if the entire tree is rainbow, it looks, maybe it's just because it's so many different colors. It looks fuzzier than your normal artificial Christmas tree. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, as holiday, as stores, this is from today.com, as stores display their holiday decor, we're spotting an increasing number of these fun and super colorful alternatives for traditional artificial trees. Holiday trends that forego the traditional green Christmas tree aren't anything new. Because, yeah, pink metallic Christmas tree in um, Charlie Brown Christmas, and that's 50 years old. Last year, we reported on the moody, darker holiday trend using black trees. Oh, I do remember that. And in 2017, people really turned things upside down, literally, by hanging their trees from the ceiling. Uh, but the rainbow tree isn't just for the holiday season. Some teachers have been spotted using them to decorate their classrooms for back to school since the colors look like a crayon box. Because of their resemblance to the LGBTQ pride flag, the rainbow trees could also be a unique decor piece in June for Pride Month. These things are wild and crazy, and I love rainbows, and I love a lot of color, but I just don't think I'm going to be hopping on the rainbow Christmas tree trend. Lots of Instagram pictures of um, how people have decorated them. I do like it for a classroom, you know, lots of bright colors, and the one picture is has, you know, cray- big big crayons or on it, um, art palettes, things like that, and it's a lot of fun. And actually, the the woman standing next to it is just as colorfully dressed as her tree, so you got to appreciate that. She is either that that teacher that everyone thinks is crazy weird, or they love her because she's crazy weird, you know, who knows. But um, what do you think about a rainbow Christmas tree? Have you seen pictures of them? Would you consider having one in your house? 
Um, what do you think? How would you use a rainbow Christmas tree? I don't think I'll be purchasing one anytime soon, but I think they, you know, in a classroom or in a pride celebration, they could definitely serve a purpose and they are very fun and bright and colorful. Just not for me necessarily. Let's go ahead and take our second break of the podcast. And when we come back, we'll be talking about comebacks. Huh, see what I did there? Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. We've talked about aliens, we've talked about some trending Christmas topics, and now we'll move on to our final topic of the night, which is comebacks of a sort. Um, I don't know if this is exactly a comeback, but it is a reappearance of a YouTube personality coming back to YouTube that a return or that YouTube personality is Olivia Jade. I actually was not familiar with her. I didn't realize I didn't know. I guess I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube, but um, Olivia Jade is a is Lori Laughlin's daughter. Lori Laughlin is an actress. She was is probably best known for Full House. She was recently involved in the college admissions scandal. And so um, Olivia Jade has been off social media for about eight months since that whole thing happened in, I think it was March. So she has now returned to YouTube, uh, saying that she, she's done a short video uh, in which she says she is quote, legally not allowed to speak about the charges her parents face. And I think that they are still, um, contesting those charges, appealing those charges, whatever. But, um, as actress Lori Laughlin did not, she has denied the charge. She and her husband, um, uh, sorry, designer Massimo Giannulli, they have den- they have they pled not guilty. They have denied the charges. So, um, her daughter, their daughter Olivia Jade Giannulli, has returned to YouTube, uploading her first video on Sunday since she was involved, engulfed, however you want to look at it, in the controversy earlier this year. Um, Olivia Jade is 20. And as I said, she's the daughter of Lori Laughlin, who's an actress and designer Massimo Giannulli. She apparently was a successful YouTube star, uh, had a bunch of brand partnerships and more than a million subscribers before the, um, admission scandal was made public in March. She was a student at the University of California and prosecutors say her parents paid $500,000 to get to fraudulently get Olivia and her sister Isabella admitted to the school. Her parents have pled not guilty to both of the charges or to the charges. When the scandal broke, Giannulli took a long social media hiatus and at one point deleted her Instagram account. She was under fire for her role in the admissions scandal, in particular for once saying in a 2018 YouTube video, I don't know how much of school I'm going to attend. I do want to want the experience of like game days, partying. I don't really care about school, as you guys all know. In the video uploaded Sunday and titled Hi Again, Olivia Jade, who was no longer enrolled in at USC as of October, 
said she is excited to return to vlogging. So she is back. Um, she said, obviously, I've been gone for a very long time. Um, adding she was debating for many months when to return and was terrified to upload a new video. Um, I'm legally not allowed to speak on anything going on right now, she said, of her parents' legal issues. So everyone has an opinion on this scandal. There has been already a ton set on it since it came out in March. I find it baffling and fascinating at the same time. You know, a lot of, there's been a lot of criticism how um, Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman, who's also involved in the, in the scandal, also an actress, got off e- maybe easier than other people might because of their celebrity status, because of their wealth. There's a lot of talk about entitlement and how, whether or not they're celebrities, they, people were still, people with money were still able to, uh, use this system that to allow them to pay money to get their their kids into different colleges with less than honest means uh, that's probably putting too fine a point on it less than honest means i mean dishonest illegal means i i don't think i have anything new that hasn't been ar- already said on it i do find it kind of uh, like I said, I find it baffling. I wonder how much the children knew what was going on. I mean, you know, I don't know if she knew what was going on. She's She talks about how she's not interested in school. That could either be just kind of a typical 18 or 19 year old who's going to school, but they, they're looking forward to the more social aspects of it. Or she, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much they might have known. And like I said, I don't probably have anything new to say on the subject that hasn't already been said a million times. So let's move back to, let's move on now to our second comeback story. Comeback reunion, however you want to look at it. And that is that the, the Pussycat Dolls, uh, reunited recently to, and performed, but only five of the six of them reunited. And there were a lot of awkward moments. I've seen a lot of posts on social media, uh, posts about people who are excited that they have um, come together to, they're going to do a tour in 2020 called, I think it's Unfinished Business. Um, but then there was a lot of talk about why Melody Thornton wasn't included in the reunion. They made an appearance on um, X Factor. Um, X Factor celebrity actually. They made that appearance on Saturday. It was the first time they had been together in almost 10 years. Um, Nicole Scherzing, Scherzinger, sorry, is a current judge on the show and she was joined by her former bandmates. Uh, let's see. Ashley Roberts, Jessica Suta, Karmit Bashar, and Kimberly Wyatt. They're all like, let's see. Wow. 38, 37, 45, and 37. Uh, looking at the the stills and some of the videos, they are still very bendy. They are still very flexible. Uh, I think they were known kind of more for their choreography than the quality of their music, but I know a lot of people were, you know, were big fans. They um, performed a medley of their hits, including Buttons, When I Grow Up, and also their new single, which is called React. There was... Um, I saw some questions as to why there were five of them when there were six originally, and there was apparently some kind of scandal. I don't know if it was really scandal or if it was just kind of blown up. Who knows what really goes on in the life of bands and groups and the drama and how much of it is real drama and how much it, how much it is just uh, made up drama. But apparently Melody Thornton um, had some issues with maybe Nicole specifically, maybe just the way things were being done, but she was not uh, involved in this reunion. And I am not going to, you know, rehash all of that. I'm sure if you're a fan of the group, you you kind of followed the the, the scandal, the, the drama, however you want to call it, on all of that. And um, so, you know, They got together. They performed on the X Factor. Some people said it seemed weird that um, 
I know one person, well, actually, I know the, the host of our entertainment podcast, Cynthia, said she thought it was strange that uh, Nicole, the lead singer, just seemed kind of detached. Like, she didn't really seem like she wanted to be there exactly. So, I don't know. If you watched it, what were your thoughts? Were you a fan of them 10 years ago when they were popular? Um, what did you think of this this reunion what do you think of their tour coming up are you excited about it are you like "Mm, whatever don't care let me know i'd love to hear from you and that note we are going to wrap up this episode of the gsmc social media news podcast if you're a fan of this podcast we would love it if you would follow us on social media um you know since it's a social media news podcast you're probably familiar with social media and how you can help us out by liking and following and retweeting and sharing and doing all those wonderful things but also if you could subscribe to this podcast that would be wonderful and five star reviews are always always helpful thank you so much for joining me join me again next time when we find out what else is trending in the world thanks you've been listening to the golden state media concepts social media podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program